Let's take a look at Uchumi's journey. The company was released at the NSC last year and has returned profits for the last four years. Please share with us your turnaround strategy. Uchumi, as we may recall, was put, been put into receivership in 2006. It took us a journey of about three years for us to say, yes, our strategies are working. And after the three years, of course, it took us another two years to prove to the world, yes, we are worth going back into the market. By going back to the market is looking at the shareholders and looking at uh, relisting in the stock exchange. Lifting of receivership was done in March 20, 2010. And uh, going back to stock exchange, which is in fact I would call the biggest milestone we ever had, was 31st of May. A coincidence. 31st of May 2011, and the company had been put into receivership 31st of May 2006. Approximately five years of being in limbo, but only three years, I would say, of bleeding. We have managed to bring the company back into stock exchange, back to its shareholders. And this is, we are now going to go to the fifth year of profitability. Uh, the previous management had uh, six years of drought of no profits at all and had losses equivalent to 2.7 billion shillings cumulative. Bringing back involved a number of things and that is restructuring the balance sheet. The next one is uh, crafting strategies and implementing it. The next one is rediscovering style of leadership. And the third one is the culture what culture fits into this organization. Now, analysts have raised hopes that the company could be issuing dividends for the first time in 10 years in this financial period. What's the latest on this front? In payment of shareholders, it is measured with a, by, with, with a number of parameters in place. That is the ability to pay, and also the alternative to go to the market and have funds to do what you call the growth of the organization. Organi this organization has gone through what you'd call very lean period. In, during the time that it was unable to do what I would call react to the market growth. So we are doing our growth in terms of uh, product lines, in, in terms of customer numbers, in terms of uh, outlets. And at the same time, we have managed to bring ourselves back into what I would call a very good shape in terms of leveraging, that is financial leveraging. So our debt portfolio is on its lowest, and it couldn't have been a better time when the borrowing is rate is very high. So the shareholders are uh, incidentally accumulating a lot of uh, their wealth because we are not giving to the bank what they should be. At the same time, the board has put itself into a position where it is evaluating how to effect a dividend policy. And once that dividend policy is done, then definitely the board is going to recommend to the AGM what it sees or foresees or plans to do and request for that kind of an approval. So it's, it's quite a process because we are coming from a time when uh, there was nothing like dividends for a number of years. The shareholder deserves a dividend. That is the, 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 the philosophy of the board. Please tell us more about your expansion plan. It's being reported that you want to double your market value in the next two to three years. We want to grow to an extent that we are able to manage ourselves with cautious outreach. And the cautious outreach I'm looking at here is referring to our business model. We are not going to own supermarkets in terms of buildings or land. Whatever we have is enough and we know our speciality or specialization for this matter is to do with uh, the retail expertise. So our retail expertise is, is hinged on what I would call again our core purpose which is customer service. And customer service is directed or extended to, to talk about the customer numbers. If you're able to do that, then we should grow our customer numbers and convert that into what you call the basket. Now, thus, to do that, we need to be where the customer is. That's why we call it grow. Now, currently, the region is grappling with high inflation rates, a factor that has seen the cost of living going up. How has this impacted on your business? It is common knowledge from an economic and financial position to know that higher prices will normally affect the propensity to buy or to consume or to save and, and this is everything that touches on the pocket of my customer it touches on me either in the short term or in the long term the first thing is to do with the working capital immediately the cost of products go up i'm forced to have more working capital in terms of value the shillings that i invest in the working capital are much higher the second one is the capacity of my customers of my suppliers 
you find quite a number of them are caught up by not being able to do what they would have been doing. So that again affects what you call the flow of goods into the supermarket. And the final one is the customer. The higher the price, the more cautious they become. And the first impact that you find when customers get into that level is to spread their buying because of the uncertainty of the prices, the size of the pocket. So we have seen the ba baskets, the, 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 the basket of the customer, the customer basket every time they're buying has been reduced. Not to say that, oh, you would call it in a different way, postponement of a purchase. From what they would have done in saying, I want to buy my goods for one month. Now you find a number of families are saying two months, uh, two, t twice, twice procurements cycles or three procurement cycles. Moving forward, Dr. Siena, what's the outlook for Chumbi supermarkets? I foresee our sales being double to three times our value in the next two to three years. And this is within the same parameters. We watch our prices for the trust of the customers. And we will s ensure our growth is geared towards what you'd call a precision of the patronage. And, and, and this comes in into the region. And this is where I would say we want to have an outlook of the whole region. And we have already become what you call the East African company.